Today, I've got three builds for you with Necrochasm on each class, but first, we've got to talk about it. This thing, fuck! With the final shape dropping, I have a Necrochasm build for you today. All these clips are pre the final shape. As we play more, I'll update it. Necrochasm will be getting a buff in the Catalyst, which I don't have yet, is getting a rework. So this weapon will get even stronger overall due to the new prismatic mechanics. It'll integrate better for you build crafters out there. Necrochasm is a 720 RPM kinetic auto rifle acquired from the reprised Crota Zen Raid. Pick up the discarded sword after defeating Crota to start the bottomless pit quest. It's a bit of a grind, especially if you're not lucky with oversold drops, but it's worth it. On top of having pretty juice stats, it comes with arrowhead break for recoil control, ricochet rounds, for even more stability and a touch of range, and desperation, which at the moment is unique to Necrochasm. It states reloading after a precision final blow or a final blow with the cursed all explosion increases your rate of fire and improves stability and aim assist. It also has hand laid stock for even more stability and recoil control, effectively turning this thing into a laser. Now for the most fun part, it's exotic perk, Curse Bringer. Precision final blows with this weapon trigger a cursed thrall explosion. Final blows with cursed thrall explosions refill the magazine. These explosions seem to sort of stack too. I've noticed in PvE, when an ad dies to the explosion, they also explode like a thrall and it spreads. Also, Necrochasm is a weapon of sorrow. Cursed thrall explosions spread a small amount of poison to anyone unfortunate enough to get caught up in it. It also got this cool ornament called Corrupted Logic for that wicked Siva look. The first build is on Striker Titan with Thunder Crash. For abilities, I'm using Thruster, Strafe Lift, Seismic Strike, also known as Shoulder Charge, and Lightning Grenades. For aspects, I'm on Touch of Thunder for better nades and Knockout for better melee, health regen, and most importantly here, Amplified, which gives a total of plus 50 mobility across five tiers, but does not exceed 100. This results in a 12.5% increase to forward movement which matches the maximum sprint speed you get from carrying a lightweight weapon as well as slide distance jump height and weapon handling for a whole 15 seconds the fragments are spark of resistance for extra damage reduction and a bump to strength spark of feedback to take knockout even further when i get into a melee engagement and a bump to resilience spark of haste for a whopping plus 32 resilience recovery and mobility which activates shortly after sprinting which we're doing most of the time Finally, Spark of Instinct to jolt nearby enemies while critically wounded. I'm using Necrochasm with Mercurial Overreach in PvP, but you can use any arc special you want. That's really to keep Amplified going. I also recommend for PvP using Indebted Kindness with Volt Shot. Our exotic armor of choice is the Octum War Rig. There are many good choices that fit the build better, such as ACD Feedbacks or Doom Marchers, but I found a little more utility out of the War Rig. Next up, we got Hunter. Starting with the mods, I spec'd out fully for my secondary, which is Beloved. It pairs really nicely with Necrochasm. Due to this auto rifle's rate of fire, I treat it like a medium range SMG and use the sniper to cover most of my other ranges. I'm on strand and using the 6th Coyote for double dodge. My hunter mans already know where I'm taking this one. For abilities, I'm on marksman dodge, triple jump, dart melee, and grapple in the grenade slot. For aspects, I'm using Widow Silk for double grapple and threaded specter that drops a clone whenever I dodge. But wait, we got two dodges. Yeah, that's two clones. For fragments, I'm using Thread of Ascent for more reload and a bunch of mobility, Thread of Warding for woven mail or orc pickup, Thread of Generation for grenade energy when I deal damage, which gives even more grapples, and Thread of Transmutation to create a tangle when I get woven mail. Honorable mention the Threat of Isolation, which emits a severing burst from rapid precision hits, creating a tangle on elimination. While there are many better strand specific build options out there, the neutral game of the third runner class pairs really nicely with the way Necrochasm works. Again, this allows me to stay highly mobile and to keep constant pressure on the opposition. Also, my clones add an element of misdirection to the mix of things. Between that clone detonation, Threadling spawning from it, and Necrochasm, more often than not, they don't realize where they're being hit from until it's entirely too late and I look. Another honorable mention here, Necrochasm goes hard on Ark Hunter as well. If you'd like to see that build, let me know in the comments also. Now last, but certainly not least, we've got the Warlock. This one by far took me the longest time out of all of them. 
Fun fact, as mentioned earlier, Necrochasm is a weapon of sorrow just like Osseo Striga, Touch of Malice, and Thorn, so it works excellently with Necrotic Grips. When you defeat an enemy, you'll see a green pulse from the target that spreads poison. This is really dangerous for Necrochasm due to the simultaneous Thrall explosions. Necrotic Grips also gives an aerial effectiveness bonus to all weapons of sorrow. This makes clearing ads incredibly easy and satisfying. Now add in all the strand ways to unravel, suspend, and thread links, and we've got an absolute cluster of BS on the screen at all times. I began with the strand build using the Weaver's Call aspect for thread links and Mind Spun Invocation for extra grenade utility. Here, every option is really good, but I chose to stay on grapple for mobility and thread links off that melee. For fragments, I'm using Thread of Continuity to give the strand effects longer duration, Thread of Generation to recharge the grapple, or whatever grenade I decide to use when I deal damage. Thread of Isolation to sever targets and make a tangle and Thread of Evolution for better threadlings overall. While this build was fun, it felt like it was lacking that extra kick needed to be successful, especially for Crucible, so I switched to Soul. Here's where I truly had the most fun with this build. You might have even seen a short I dropped called The Phoenix. If you haven't, go check it out. We kept Necrotic Grips, but now I'm on Dawn Blade and using Well of Radiance. Phoenix Dive for a quick heal, but mostly for aerial mobility to dive to the ground so I don't get caught in the air. Burst Glide, Incinerator Snap. This helps burn them with Solar, and Necrotic Grips activates here too. Now they take a bunch of tick damage over time. Even though Solar can't burn opponents out anymore, it'll get them weak for either Necrotic Grips to finish it or make them really easy cleanup. I'm also using Fireball Grenade for extra tags. The aspects here are Heat Rises, which makes it so that I can shoot and use abilities mid-air by consuming the grenade, also providing healing for myself and close by teammates on consumption. This also gives me a second dash for the next aspect, which is Icarus Dash. It's another aerial movement that I use to either engage or disengage combat. This also allows healing from airborne kills. This also pairs well with Necrotic Grips due to the aerial effectiveness increase. For Fragments, I'm using Ember of Ashes to apply even more Scorch, Ember of Eruption, for a wider ignition radius, Ember of Combustion for solar super defeats, making enemies ignite, also making a fire sprite, and finally Ember of Char, allowing ignitions to spread scorch to affect the targets. For mods here, I threw on everything kinetic just for fun. Another honorable mention here is for Celestial Fire Melee. It's another powerful range choice with Necrotic Grips. With all that said, are these builds meta? No. <laughs> are they fun? Well, that depends on your playstyle, but I enjoy using these combinations. Here are the three builds for today. Let me know what you think about these builds in the comments or if you have any other builds for Necrochasm, I'd like to try all of them out. Please don't forget to smack that like button and sub. Thank you all for watching. See you in the next one.